left. My palms are sweaty as I'm walking in. It's this dark room with two stools and this man that I've never met before. Hi. Hi, Jamie Lee. How are you? Good, how are you? Nice to meet you, Steve. I'm really nervous. <laughs> it's very intimidating sitting across from him. OK, my job is to obviously ask questions. Let's get stuck right into it. We've got a few things to cover and look for compatibility, look for any conflict or contradiction between what the girls are saying and what their body language is stating. So tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm 23. I'm from Perth, WA. I analyse the content and structure of what they're saying to show whether or not they really have feelings and emotions. So what is it that someone can do that really annoys you? Oh, God. Um, like, how little do we want to go here? Like... So it's not just a matter of asking the questions. I'm looking for certain behavioural cues. Are you a saver or a spender? <laughs> spender. Steve starts off by asking us some pretty light-hearted questions. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Can you sit on both scales? What are the qualities that you're looking for in The Bachelor? Someone who I feel safe to be myself with, but the questions definitely got quite deep pretty quick. What do you like at relationships? I guess in my relationships, I've not really been myself. Why? I have really struggled with being comfortable with who I am and what I've experienced, so I've had a bit of insecurity around trust and companionship, I think. So It's OK. Take your time. And do you think that is affecting who you really are and who he sees? Yeah, definitely. Sorry. One of the things I picked up with Brooke is that at the start, we are maintaining good uh, eye contact and she was quite confident. And it was only at that moment in relation to the questions about her past relationships that there was definite, distinct change in behaviour. It could be because she really didn't want to disclose much further, which I have to respect. I you know, don't want to delve into too many personal private issues. I'm feeling really uncomfortable. <laughs> Sorry. It's OK. Take your time. <laughs> Do you want to take a break yeah. for a second? There is something that I do want to tell Nick in terms of, you know, my past relationships that I haven't told him yet. It's something that is quite personal. So I feel really uncomfortable, I guess, talking about this with Steve. All right, Jamie Lee, how many dates have you been on with The Bachelor? In all honesty, I've kind of really only had the chance to introduce myself at the moment. So, Diana, why are you on The Bachelor? I applied because I'm single and looking for someone. Okay, so do you see yourself having a family and children? Definitely. With Diana, it was funny because I, I, I didn't see a lot of emotion. Um, would you be devastated if it didn't work out between you and Nick? I would be upset by that. She was deadpan, very deadpan. So I struggled, I really struggled with her. Okay, Sophie, um, what do you see yourself in two years from now? I hope to be a registered valuer by then. So is work important to you? Definitely. Work is very, very important and I'm shooting for the stars at the moment. I'm definitely being honest with Steve. I have nothing to hide. But, I mean, he's a human lie detector. Like, that's scary. Now, Tennille, do you believe that you can fall in love during this process? Um, yeah, I wouldn't say that I couldn't. Are you slow to fall in love or quick to fall in love? How would you describe? For me, I think time is a huge factor with falling in love and I feel like maybe I'd keep people at an arm's length. Why? Why is that? I... I don't know. One of the things I found with Tennille is that she didn't volunteer a lot of information. So I think there's walls and I think she's protecting herself from something at this stage. I don't know what quite that may be. OK, Cassie, what are you expecting? What do you want to get out of this? Um, I mean, the ultimate... If, like, what I'm... This, sorry. It's okay. Take your time. What I ultimately want is to find that person that I can spend the rest of my life with. Like, I think my biggest fear coming here was realising who it was and if I could potentially fall in love with them. And, yeah, coming here, I'm happy and stoked at who the person is because, yeah, I feel so strongly for him. So, how many dates have you been on with Nick? Um, so, I haven't been on any single dates in the house. Um, then how do you know whether you like him or not? I actually know Nick from before here. OK. Yeah, I met him in a bar and um, literally saw him from across the room. And I don't know, this sounds so lame, but I felt like there was this moment there. And um, I think it was like a few months later, I was at a football event and he was there. And he's like, I know you. And I was like, yeah, I know you as well. Um, and then we hung out a few times and stuff. And 
Yeah, I really got to know him when we went on a couple dates. I didn't see any conflict or contradiction between what Cassie is saying and uh, what her body language is stating. I think Cassie is absolutely infatuated with Nick. Okay, so how many dates in total would you have gone on? Just like a handful, probably like, I don't know, not just like... So between like six three, and ten? No, between three and five. Sorry, do you mind if I have water? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. Steve asked me about Nick and I and I don't really want to say too much about it, so it was definitely nerve-wracking. My mouth goes really dry when I'm nervous. All the girls have been interviewed individually by Steve-O, and now we'll be interviewed as a couple. Yes, sir. I definitely think that Nick and I are compatible. Hello. Hey. How are you? Oh, yeah, jogging in. Good. <laughs> Good to see you. But the thing that's making me feel a little worried about today is that we might have a professional tell us otherwise. My analysis of you, uh, Sophie, is that you're very direct, you're very driven, motivated, which I think are fantastic qualities. You're very goal-oriented. Would you agree with that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, which is important to you, which is yeah. fine. How do you feel about that in so far as a partner? Good. I'm goal-oriented myself. and. I think if you have individual goals and you have goals for, together, then, you know, the world's your oyster. What is more important to you personally? Love, relationships or work? Can we put all three together? Do you, you, you can prioritise? Oh, that's, that's really tough. Sophie can't decide what's more important, work or love. And I understand that completely because I was 25 once and I was all bang, focus, launch. So she's a driven woman and she'll get there. It's all about timing and I think there'll be love. There'll be time for love. Walking into this room with Nick and with Steve, I guess I'm nervous, but I'm confident in how I portray myself and who I am. And hopefully Nick sees that <laughs> to see you here. <laughs> Very good. Okay, well, Jamie Lee, the impression I got from some of your responses is you're quite open-minded and quite realistic about how you view things. Yeah, definitely. I, I don't shy away from, from anything. <laughs> Have you had time to talk to each other? Oh, we had a, a brief chat at a, at a cocktail party, um, probably oh, five, five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So my name was Jamie Lee. Yeah, Jamie Lee. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, is family for you a prospect in the future that you would be looking for? I definitely like a family, yeah. I do definitely see that in, in my future, but I think that's probably not going to happen right now. <laughs> <laughs> what about first date first? <laughs> yeah, it's be great. <laughs> I don't know Nick very well at the moment. All right, we're done. Thank you very much. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks so much. But I've never really met someone that instantly I just feel comfortable with, and it's such a nice feeling. <laughs> all right, we did all right. Yeah, awesome. OK, um, Tennille, one of the things I, I noticed is, and you said something that resonated, and that is you like to keep people at arm's length. Why is that? Oh, just to a certain degree. I think I'm very aware of, you know, being hurt in the past, so... So would it be safe to say that you keep people at arm's length because you're scared of being hurt? Potentially, yes, yeah. yeah. When Steve highlighted the fact that I keep people at an arm's length, I could see that Nick was very unimpressed. Are you a controlling person? Oh, um, I do like a bit of order and control in my life. Yes. I could sort of see it wasn't going too well, to some degree. Thank you very much for that, Tanil. OK, thanks, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm not feeling too great about it. Diana, are you an emotional person? Yeah, it definitely can be emotional. What's your biggest flaw? I'm competitive in, for instance, yoga. Yoga's not competitive. That could be a flaw. OK, I think that wraps it up for me. Thank you very much. Hello. How are Hello. you? Hello. How are you? Good. It's definitely a scary thought that Steve could change Nick's mind in a way because I think our connection is quite strong, but who knows what Steve might say. Brooke, when I first started talking to you, one of the things I noticed is you're looking down quite often to your left. 
Um, and that could be a number of reasons, confidence, uh, you know, fear. And the notes I made was you uh, have some self-doubt at times. Steve brought up that I have a lot of self-doubt. I was like, OK, bums drop, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Steve. But I think you're in the process of working through that, which is a good sign. Yeah, for sure. I'm a lot more spiritual and in touch with myself emotionally than I've ever been in my life. And it's because I just had to kind of let go of a few things that had happened and that I held on to. Um, sorry, <laughs> this is really hard. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to cry again. <laughs> <laughs> Good? I'm good. <laughs> Where, where's your head at the moment? What are your feelings towards Brooke? I think she's genuine. So for me, that's massive. You know, I, I feel good. Listening to Nick saying I am pretty genuine definitely has pushed me to tell him about something that was a part of my past. I feel like I don't want to lie to him and I just need to be completely honest. So if I get an opportunity to tell him, I definitely will take it. Take a seat. Greetings. Hello. How are you? It's a passionate embrace. <laughs> Wasn't it? So, Cassie, how important is compatibility to you in a relationship? I think it's important that you get along, you share the same values and beliefs, and I feel like I am compatible with Nick in many different ways. But down the track, do you see yourself having family and children? Um, yeah, 100%. I definitely want a family whenever that is. Um, yeah, I would, I would love a family. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Yeah. OK, do you believe that you can fall in love in this scenario on The Bachelor? I came here to potentially fall in love and find this person, and when I saw Nick, I thought it was, like, the best alternative that could have happened because, yeah, I always thought that he was this pretty amazing guy and there was feelings there that I had, and the feelings are developing, but I also feel like we haven't really had much time to spend with each other. Like, I'm, I'm waiting for that single date to just be able to spend the day with you and, like, be able to see how it is as a couple. But, yeah, I feel like Nick is someone I could fall in love with, and I just have to hope that my connection with Nick is different to everyone else's, and at the end of the day, he's going to choose someone, and, um, like, obviously, I'd love that to be me. Excellent. Thank you very much, Cassie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> I would say that with Cassie, she's absolutely besotted with Nick. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> and there's no doubt in my mind uh, that she could fall in love if she's not already in love.